and welcome to another of these technical sessions with uh, us at Skullmore. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining us. We, we really do appreciate it. There's, there's a few of you in tonight, so it's getting a bit more regular. We're starting to do a few more of these. So if you've seen these before, we get the option to take questions. So over here, I've got, I've got questions that can come in and we can take those questions and look at them with you. Tonight, we're looking specifically at uh, can you wire between um, so the consumer unit and how long does that need to be between the, the main fuse? We're starting to, to look at those. We'll take questions as we go through. So you're probably wondering where Jake is, aren't you? So Jake isn't actually here tonight, but we're gonna be uh, joined by Jake. He's gonna come on and start to look at this, this conundrum that we, we know all too often. And it probably is because we used to look at, at some regulations previously that used to look at this. And they used to start to say, do you or don't you? Can you, can't you? And in fact, it was an old regulation that used to say, a mission of protected device, and it's looking at those and where you can or can't you omit that protected device, that overcurrent protective device. So we're gonna to start to look at that because we here at Skullmore, we get lots and lots of questions coming into our technical support team. And this is one of them. Since we've gone into Illusion and we start to look at this, and we've also supplied lots of products available for this, this type of installation in the past, people are starting to ask us, do you need to start to fit stuff like this? Is it used, not used? How should you be putting it in? And, and where should you be putting it in? So let, let's take a look at, and just to let you know exactly what we've been doing when we've been investigating this. So let's get into this and start to take a look then. We need to understand, just to, the, the, to stretch the question out a little bit more, um, we need to know, can we, is it absolutely okay from the regulation point of view to install a consumer unit more than three meters away from the service cutout or the origin of the installation? And uh, there are some resources out there that you can turn to. We use this quite a lot. So uh, there's the electrical safety first, Jake. Yeah, there's some great documents on there and some what happens is there's a uh, setup called the RAG. RAG, yeah, which is Wiring Regulations Advisory Group. Okay, yeah. Yep. So that's basically uh, across the industry, people come together, they sit around the table, they look at common questions, and more importantly, as an industry, they come up with common answers. Yeah. So they do that, don't they? So you can gain access to that via the pro professional resource uh, yeah. part of that. Um, and it's question 1.38 that we're looking at. Yes. And it, it goes on to state that the question is, is it permissible to install a consumer unit more than three meters from the distribution distributors service head. Well, that's, that's exactly, exactly what looking we're looking right. for. Right, and the answer to this one here, it says, yes. Right, we're done. Hold on, hold on, it's got to be a bit longer than that. <laughs> yes, in certain circumstances, it goes on to say here, distributors generally accept a maximum of two or three meters from the service head. So that consuming it there, Jake, what this is telling us, that generally uh, a DNO will want it to be within that two or three meters. That's right. all, that's so it. The, the two or three metres, that's quite a distance. Do we, yeah, is that, tiles, yeah. DNO-wise, do we know whereabouts, or is it just you have to find out from them themselves? Well, no, the, the DNOs are basically saying the risk to those tiles are, is minimal because of the installations where we're starting to put this, it's going to be minimal. So the, the options for mechanical damage and stuff like that is, is pretty, it's pretty reduced. The risk is really, really narrow that's going to happen. So their fuse protecting those is absolutely okay. What they're not happy with, though, is anything longer than that. But there's no written rule to say it must be a, a line drawn in the sand. You can actually go further than that if you get permission from the DNO to use their service cutout fuse mm -hmm. for longer runs. Okay. So that means you have to contact the DNO, ask them, All and right. then they'll say, yes, I'll give you permission to use my fuse to protect your circuit. That is highly unlikely you're going to do that, but that's what's a, a suggested yep. method of complying. But this goes on to say, whether tiles need to be longer than the distributor may require you t to install an isolator or a means of protection to that sub-circuit that you're creating. This does both. So that one there, so what's this? This is one of the things that we offer, is it? Yep, it is, yep. So we've got a, an isolator here and it comes with an inbuilt fuse inside there. So you've got a cartridge fuse. This one's at 80 amp. I believe we do other ones as well. Yeah, now this one here, again, this is sizable, so it's, it's not big and horrible and bulky. It comes with the fuse, but this would allow you to then create, effectively, that sub-circuit. So we're putting this somewhere in the installation, um, as close to the origin. Within that two or three metres, you're putting one of these. And now you're going to go from here to that with your sub-circuit or your distribution circuit. That's effectively what you're creating, Jake, is a distribution circuit. Right, question for you then. <laughs> If this is an 80 amp, does that mean the fuse back 
Uh, the service cutout needs to be 100 for our selectivity. Yeah, selectivity. So, yeah, you need to really think about this because you are creating a, a distribution circuit. And as Jake said there, uh, this being 80 and this one, you can put different sizes in that. But you couldn't put 100 in because there's 100 at the origin. Mm. All of a sudden, as Jake suggested, we've got rid of that selectivity between the two devices discrimination as we used to know it between one device and the other so if a fault was to occur you don't know it's going to take this one out or the other one out yeah that's a that's a problem and a concern now this is a problem jake if it is only an 80 amp at the origin which we know a lot of them are dnos are yeah, to reduce yeah. it as well aren't they so if we then we've got an 80 at the origin we've got to go down again for that so we've got what, 60 63 whichever you want to call it yeah so what about the loading requirements of this thing? Because <laughs> You'll be it, we're starting to put in EV charge points, oh, yeah, yeah. You'll the cooker circuit, and yeah. if we looked at it like that, you know, yeah, we're, we're going to be done for. Yeah, you really need to consider this as your part of your design to ensure the installation performs as it should do. You really need to look at those. And also, we, we see that this, and people are saying, okay, but what cable comes from here then? Where does that cable then, then go out to? So the cable from here to there, basically, this is how we're seeing it done at the moment. People are either installing SWA or they're doing twin and earth. There's advantages and disadvantages of both, isn't there? There is indeed, yeah. So, of course, if we look at this, I'm not sure we can see as close up, but we haven't got anywhere really to fix this is the base plate that sits on there not really anywhere to get a decent size 20 mil 25 mil no, hole within that no, so no. swa when we look at this on its own <laughs> is probably a no-go yeah i yeah. know that we used to see some sort of plates didn't we oh, the pla up. yeah now the, pl the plate when i was a contracts manager we used to do especially in blocks of flats we used to install uh, gland plates now these gland plates jake we used to get them made up back in the day but uh, they would sit as a piece of, of bent up material and we just drill a 20 or 25 mil hole in the top of that that would allow us then to terminate our our swa with the gland that sits across there and then the tails come out the bottom of that and then we start to terminate those into isolators like this now this is another problem because <laughs> in doing that it looks great and it looks a really easy bit of kit but these are single insulated at that point mm -hmm. so we had to over sleeve these to make sure that they were actually protected against uh, against that just want to congratulate shot. you on your drawing because oh, it's a great drawing it right? is yeah and if anyone knows darren he's not the best drawer i've seen oh, some of his on screen <laughs> with his cars and his houses that's harsh but, but fair <laughs> but no great drawing mate and that's obviously going to help uh, the contractor out so that's one way of doing yep. it or you can put that into an enclosure so an enclosure it's got the the, the star lock on there which you'd expect to see or the triangle lock which you normally have on meter cupboards as well so you could put one of these in again you can get these and they're, they're um, ip rated or whatever and that and would where would these be situated things. darren but that's the next thing because people are saying if you're going to fit one of those in and create that distribution circuit where does this go so where are we going to put this and people are starting to say can equipment like this go into meter cupboards um, we, well, there may be space in that meter cupboard, but normally that's the property of the DNO still, isn't it? Yeah, and I, I, I'd like to think that if you are getting permission from the DNO, they're going to say put it in there. But we know them; we know that their equipment inside there that is that does belong to them. We've seen it over the years where people have put stuff in there, and the DNO hasn't been best pleased with it. So. Yeah, we see and now at the particular moment in time, we're seeing lots of electric vehicle charging points. They're going into there, putting a small consumer in it, and then they're running out to those. And again, that, that part of the installation should be left, so, so that's a big concern there. So moving on from SWA then, Darren, we're looking at um, Twin and Earth, maybe, if we wanted yep. to use that, so 16mm Twin and Earth. Mm -hmm. My question for you off the back of that then would be, what about if we need to RCD protect that? Because well, that's going, you know, yeah, that's generally it. speaking, we look at Twin and Earth, we're going in, in a depth less than 50mm, so it's going to need some sort of additional protection. Yeah. There's a couple of questions on that. We're looking at... Um, Diversity, or not diversity, division of installation. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, on, on regulation f uh, 314, it's all about division of installation there and the unwanted trippings and stuff so like that. So we've got that, and we've got the CPC uh, issue that I want to discuss. Right, okay, so let's look at the first one there. So as Jake said here, you've got one of these in or you decided that's, that's not going to be good enough for me because I've got to use twin and earth through the installation. To get me from here to there, it's a 16 mil twin and earth. We've seen that used quite yep. a lot as well. Now at that point there, it's a soft flexible cable that we install and you, you're probably going to find that if it's in the depth that are less than 50 million in the walls you are going to need to give it additional protection of a 30 milliamp rcd if you do that at the origin you are not complying with the requirements and regulations because any fault within there will, could take out the main rcd mm -hmm. 
it's plunging the whole place into darkness and without energy. So there's, there's a concern there, isn't there? What's the point in having all those RCBOs or RCDs at this end when you've got one at the origin that's just going to gonna go out with any fault that it does find? So you wouldn't be able to comply with that one there. So at this point here, you've got to look at saying, well, I could clip that direct. So you, your twiddle nail could be clipped. Is a new build going to allow a 16 mil clip direct? No, definitely not. You may have some service voids you can do that in. That'd be yeah. okay. You could remove the need for the our main RCD if you were doing that through blocks of flats. Clipping a twin and earth direct through a service void is absolutely fine, and, and it's done. They in the ceilings they put on tray basket or something like that. For that for, that's for okay. the risers maybe. Yeah, as well, that's yeah. absolutely fine. You could do that. That would negate the need for that RCD at the origin of the system there. But the other one that you mentioned there, Jake, is true of both, whether it's going to be an SWA going from here or whether it's going to be a twin and earth going from here. You're still going to have to concern yourself with where is the main earth terminal now? Mm -hmm. So if you put one of these in, is that the main earth terminal here or is the main earth terminal still in the consuming it? Would you run your bonds to there or to here? Well, actually, this is the main earth terminal. Right, OK. So now the cable between here and there, that's no longer just a CPC, Jake. No, it's going to be taking any fault current that is being, has been produced by this all the way back down that CPC or that yeah. main earth as we want to call it now, Yeah, that's back it. to there. So, so we've got a distribution circuit and that distribution circuit, the CPC, needs to be sizeable and we actually need to size it in line with bonding requirements because it could be taking that bonding, that current that comes from there, that fault current that Jake's talking about, down to here. Now, if you're installing one of these, an easy way of doing that would be to install the earth terminal external to this yep. and have that as your main uh, earth terminal for the installation. Or if you want to oversize, and this is where we see, especially when people are doing this, Jake, we see another CPC run alongside this. It's normally tie wrapped to it, isn't it? Yeah. So it's, it's there. And at that point there, it increases the size of the CPC so it does match the requirements. So it, that then does become the point of uh, bonding for the local installation. So loads to consider there and we, we know for well that there is loads of information out there. Um, don't forget, please start putting your questions in. We're taking questions live today with you as well. We just wanted to really show you some of the options that are available and enclosures that you can get hold of to make sure that you are complying with the regulations. But we've covered lots. We've looked at the main earth terminal requirements. We've looked at division of installations. We've looked at what would happen with what old diversity between this device and the other device. RCDs, if you're looking at those as well. So it gets going right back to the very beginning, Jake. Can you install a consumer it more than two or three metres away? Yes, you can. However, you need to consider a lot as a designer when you are doing so. So there we have it. it. Lots to consider, lots to think about, lots to get your head around. And just to, just to confirm exactly where, if you want to get that question and answer, that 1.38, you can get that from uh, Electrical Safety First. So just put that in your search engine. That will bring up their main website. From there, right at the top, you will see professional resources. That will open up a brand new page for you to look at. In there, under wiring regulations, you're going to click the button. It's then going to have wiring regulations advisory group, or RAG as it's short. And it gives you two options. You can look at new installations or existing installations. And uh, there's lots of questions in there. It gives you the ability to search. So you can put something in there that you want to search for. So in this occasion, I just searched for three meters. And it came up with the three meters and the two or the three meter. And again, the, the beauty of this resource is it's, it's there for you to use. It's got all the industry behind it. They come together, they look at this, and then they can go forward with, with the answer. It gives you the ability to say to your clients or customers, Look, it's not me saying you need to have this. This is what the industry are saying, and you can push that, that across them there. We've got very little questions coming in. It's a shame because this is your time. We're starting to do this and get that across to you and more and more as much as we can. So the same time next month, you'll see Jake and I doing something a slightly bit more different. If you've got any questions, you can put them into us. I'm looking at some of the questions here that have been coming in, and people are starting to say, brilliant, thank you. Where did you get that resource from? So it's electrical safety first. That's not just for one scheme provider, if you're with Napier, if you're with NIC, EIC, or with Alexa, it's for all of them, so, so get yourself into that. So that is electrical safety first, and you can find that one there. Thank you very much for, for bringing that one up to us. But if you've got nothing else to ask, hopefully Jake have, have given you some thoughts to go away with about looking to distribute cables out to this, and if it is more than three meters away, what you can or what you can't install to get over some of those problems when you're looking at technical solutions and compliance with the regulations.
But really, from us here at Skullmore, we are here to help you. And if you would like any more information, just feel free to contact us. You can do via all the social media channels, or you can contact us directly, and we're only too happy to help. So until next time, guys, please take care. Hopefully next time we'll get Jake back here in person. Take care all. Bye.